And now it's time for a preview of an upcoming game by Tom Vassell. Hey Vassal. folks, today we're going to be taking a look at a preview at a game currently on Kickstarter called Dragon's Horde. Now in Dragon's Horde, you, it's a card game about where you're a dragon hunter and a dragon has stolen treasures from everybody. So you're going out to recover this and you are using the farmer ship along the way to help uh, lure the dragon out, I suppose, to get the treasures that you need. It's a simple, easy card game. Let's take a look. Remember, of course, as we go over this, that what you're seeing here is a prototype, although some of it is pretty close to being finished, uh, like the artwork here, which I, I really like these, these like psychedelic sheep. Each of the sheep is a different color. You can see the five colors here, blue, yellow, red, orange, and purple, and they also have a different pose, so you can tell the difference between them. Uh, you have a deck of cards that you'll be drawing from, and the backs of these cards are different. They're one of the five different colors, and you have four cards that are face up. So on your turn, the first thing you'll do is you will draw two cards. Now you can draw from a face-up card, in which case that card is replaced, or you can draw the card from the top of the pile, in which case a new card is there to draw from. So you'll always add two cards to your hand. Now you'll notice that the front of these cards is very different than the back of them. The front of them is your poor sheep, and the, 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 back, the back of them here has uh, action cards and treasures that you'll be able to play. On a player's turn, they can play one action card and they can lay down one treasure. Or they can do that in reverse order, lay down the treasure, then play an action card. Uh, here's an action card you can play on someone to uh, s steal two cards from that person. Here you can draw two cards. Here you can uh, make your opponent discard half of the cards in their hands, or you can make someone skip their turn. Now, if someone has a battle card in their hand, they can play that to stop an action card you play against them, unless you play a wizard with your action card, in which case your action is unstoppable. Each of the five colors has one of each of the action cards in it. So uh, if you're good at card counting, I suppose you could figure out how many of each action card is left. Now, what you're really going to want to do is these action cards are important, but the game is about playing treasures in front of you. Now, there are different types of treasures that have different values, and again, these come in a different colors. You can see here's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight of the different treasures, starting all the way at the bottom, the gold coins going all the way up to the damsel, or I, I believe there's also gonna be a prince, because the dragon captures all sorts of people. Now, each of these will give you uh, a certain amount of points up here, but it requires you to play a certain amount of resources. So for example, this treasure chest here, if I want to lay this treasure down in front of me, I would have to discard two blue cards and then any two colors of my choice. So I could get rid of two blues and then a yellow and a red if I wanted to. There's also a special card in the deck, which is called the Wild Sheep. And wow, doesn't he look proud? But he's basically a wild, so he can be one of any color. So you can play that one. Once you play those, you place the treasure in front of you. Now, besides treasures, instead of a treasure, you can play a lair. And there's layers of different colors. And when you play a lair, you will get bonus points at the end of the game, depending on how many colored treasures of that type you've put out. So for example, this yellow layer here, if at the end of the game, I've put out three yellow treasures, then I will get six bonus points. And if I put out four yellow treasures, I'll get 10 bonus points. And so the game will continue until one player has laid out a certain number of treasures in front of them, 10 in a two to three player game, and eight in a four player game. And then everybody has one last turn, and then the game is over. You add up your points from your layers and from the treasure cards you put in front of you, and whoever has the most points is the winner. The main thing that's gonna be attractive about this game is first of all, it's ease of play. Drawing the cards, uh, the back, seeing what the backs of the cards are. When you're stealing from your opponents, you can see the backs of the cards that you're taking from them. The artwork is really well done. It has a very bright and cheerful color. And you, it, it comes down to basically some simple strategies of, am I gonna collect a whole bunch of small treasures and try to end the game that way? Or am I gonna build up and get the big treasures? I see my opponent has a lot of yellow cards that they're grabbing. Maybe I should make them discard half the cards in their hand. Do I use this card as a resource or do I keep this battle card to protect myself from other people? Now these aren't 
horribly taxing decisions, and but it's, it's a game that just plays so simply and easily. This is an excellent, what we would call, filler game, uh, one that could be played in between other games. So, if this is the kind of card game you're looking for with this artwork and this theme and just easily played from two to four players, then check it out. Uh, it's on Kickstarter right now. In a moment, I'll show you a link for Dragon's Horde. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah. Yeah.